Ich bin ich. Hi, welcome back to the Headbangers Podcast, where your host Nathan and Brad. Here today we're joined by Eric from Despise Icon. How are you doing, man? I'm great, thanks, man. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, I want to ask about your set later on. What can we expect? I know that you've made a re-release of Deter, so will you people expect any songs of that coming? Uh, yeah, actually, we're going to play some old stuff, you know, uh, and then some newer stuff, because actually we, we released an album just before the pandemic, and we never got to tour for the new album. So it's just going to be like... Uh, a, a good uh, a, a good portion of everything, you know, like new stuff, old stuff, uh, yeah, classics as usual. Yeah, well, I can speak for all three of us, and we're excited to see Purgatory live because that song's just rips my heart out, honestly. Yeah, and on the sort of um, the subject of deter, obviously you're you're visiting older songs in that that EP. Um, I just want to ask you, what was it like sort of visiting those old songs and coming back to them? It was great, actually, because uh, and, and that's how it came up uh, because. We were, uh, celebrate, we're, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And uh, we earlier uh, in the year, we released the two first albums on vinyl and digging through the band's archives to uh, get like the master recording and stuff. That's how we stumbled onto like the, the demos and the, the, the material we use uh, to, uh, to make the uh, Terre EP. So yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, quite uh, fun to like revisit some of these songs. And some of them like have never been released since 2005. Like uh, the song Sever the Ties is, it's like it was long gone, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I, I listened to it on the coach ride here and I gotta say, the mixing on it, it just gives, it adds like an extra punch to, to all those songs again, and it just adds a new little sort of flavor, I find. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, like you guys are heavyweight Deathcore icons, like the despised icons, you know, you've been going for like 20 years now. Was there anything that you missed from like the old Deathcore scene that isn't like prevalent now, and is there anything now that you think is better than how things used to be? Well, it, I mean, there are so many uh, good young bands now uh, labeled Deathcore. I, I think of my peers in um, Lorna Shore or um, Signs of the Swarm, but it, it sounds different, you know. It, it, it has, like, uh, I, I guess, a, a different evolution. We're, like, more like traditional Deathcore where it, you have, like, very straight-up hardcore parts in the song and death metal parts. Nowadays, I think it's more like... Uh, homogenic and, and they integrate a lot of orchestral stuff and uh, but it's all about like the growls and the low vocals and the, the like the super slow slowish uh, breakdowns and stuff so yeah it's all good man we all like big family so. yeah yeah I think you guys have definitely like inspired a lot of these younger bands as well so it must be cool to like see what you've, you've, you've planted basically and it's just grown and I think Defcon now is the best it's been like you know we've got so many good bands so uh, absolutely yeah we get that a lot <laughs> yeah, I also want to ask you um, obviously the, I feel like you're one of those bands that I always see on, on a tar bill and I feel like you've got so much going on what's like sort of the secret to being able to sort of be in the zone and, and bring your top performance each time, or like, especially on like these long tours. Well, you know, we're uh, we're not a full-time touring band anymore. Uh, we get to do this like once or twice a year. So, I guess whenever we get the chance to hit the road all together, we just try to make the most out of it. And and every night is special for us. So, you know, you get the energy from the crowd, from the fans, and it gets to you. And you just you give your hundred percent. So. Yeah, that's that's just how it works for us right now. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. So is there any bands like obviously Damnation today that you're looking forward to seeing that you know you've got a bit of spare time, then you're like definitely checking out these guys? Well for sure, I'd really like to catch Converge because I've never seen him live. Yeah. And uh, so as soon as I found out they were playing tonight, I was like, holy shit, that's great, you know. Uh, same for at the gates. I, I've seen him before, but I never play like Slaughter of the Soul uh, front to back. Uh, that's going to be good. I'm looking forward to see my friends in Misery Index. It's been a while. We toured a lot with them in the past. Uh, same as Pig Destroyer, fucking great grind core band. And we have been influenced by them a lot in our earlier days. So yeah, tons of great bands today. Yeah, it's a really good lineup. We're very excited to see everyone, including yourselves. <laughs> yeah, I also want to ask, uh, also you guys have probably been the most brutal death core band I've, I've really listened to like for at least 20 years 
I just want to ask, like, with having so much time under your belt and you know, and coming back constantly with um, albums and everything like that, what's like the secret to being as brutal as you always have been? Oh man, that's a good, that's a tough question. I mean, I guess it's just us being Canadians and <laughs> from the north, I guess, and and battling like against the cold and the and we ha- we've had so many. Uh, great bands from Quebec that influenced us like Cryptopsy or Cataclysm that were super brutal, uh, Gorguts as well. We've listened to those bands when we were young so I guess having such brutal bands being your main influence it makes you like come up with fucking brutal music you know. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm a massive fan of Cryptopsy myself like we, we got to, the chance to speak to Matt from Cryptopsy yeah. like last year He's such a nice guy he and is. honestly makes some of the most brutal music I've ever and heard. And he's got a great podcast too. He does, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it was the inspiration yeah. for it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so like looking back at like the tour when it came out and then where we are now with Purgatory, like do you think your influences as a band have changed since like the early days or do you think like you still like some of the same stuff and you, you know, how do you feel about that thing? Well, I, I like to listen to newer bands. Uh, one of them, the, the, the recent or like a newer band I really enjoy is uh, Rivers of Nail. I really love their music. And I really feel that somehow it influenced me on the, on the upcoming album we're going to release next year. We're, we're recording a new album right now. And I can see that they influenced me somehow. But... I also always go back to like my old school roots, you know, uh, Suffocation, Hatebreed, Metallica, uh, Slayer, Sepultura, very much. So yeah, so it's it's a combination of both, you know. Sometimes I feel like I need to go back to my old school roots, but I really like some of the newer stuff that's coming out. Like so many great bands. Good shot, Rufus Nile. Though I think those guys are killing it for the moment. I, um, one thing I, was, I wanted to ask you as well is, have you ever been to like a festival and thought, I wish I was in the crowd for this? Like the lineup was just so good that you're like, I just wish I was, I was watching this myself. Oh yeah, it happened quite many times, but uh, one that I can recall was uh, Hellfest uh, 2009. I mean, Manowar was headlining and then Dream Theater was playing. You even had like Europe, you know, like old bands and it, it was just so great. And and then I also got to see like Mastodon, suicide, Suicidal Tendencies and yeah, so actually we played super early that day and um, I just went to the crowd and watched like all the bands the whole, the, for the rest of the day. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so how have you found Damnation Festival so far then? I imagine, I don't know if you've just arrived or, you know, what, you, what are you thinking of it so far? Because it's quite new to us as well, because it used to be in Leeds and this is the first time in Manchester, so we're just like sort of getting the grips of, you know, everything. Well, it, it looks massive. I mean, we got here super early, around 9 a.m. to load in because uh, Decapitated is uh, headlining the stage we're playing and we're sharing a bus with them. So we got here super early and I was just walking around and I was like, wow, this is like massive, like three stages indoors. So uh, yeah, it looks really promising and I can't wait to catch some of the other bands later on. It's fun doing an interview in a a boxing gym as well. It's definitely a first for us. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. As well, um, I just wanted to to ask you, um, with, with it being the 20th anniversary, what's been like probably the biggest lesson you've learned in those 20 years as a band? I guess it's uh, stick stick to your sound and stick to what you do because I recall like uh, I don't know like 17 years ago we were booked uh, on tours opening up for bands like Crisian, Behemoth and Morbid Angel and all those like purist death metal fans they were like giving us shit every day every night and like booing us on stage and uh, and then, you know, we, and I was talking with the boys and like, you know, we should stick to what we do. This is us. This is our sound. This is how we look. You know, we don't have long hair. We don't have like leather pants and stuff, you know. So, and, and we kept grinding and grinding. And then suddenly, like other bands like Job for Cowboys, Suicide Silence, they popped up and they, 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 they helped us like make a trail for the trend. And, and uh, so, yeah, I guess that's the secret of uh, lo- longevity, you know, just keep, Keep doing what you do, stay true to yourself, and, and that's it. You know? Oh, yeah, I love how you pulled up the obviously, because back in the day, like, a lot of diehard like death metal guys were really opposed against Death Guard. Suicide Silence had it, and it's like 
this is great. Like, what, what, what's the problem? And you look back on all those old albums, and now those people that were trashing them are like, oh yeah, no, I love that, those albums. So it's it's just funny how things go backwards, and yeah. like the, people realize, oh, so wrong. Exactly, the elitism is that's how it is, you know. But the, I'm glad that over time it changes, you know. So yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. I think like now as well. The, the lines between the genres are like so like few far between like you know I think people are much more open minded so you've got hardcore kids doing death metal you've got like you know death metal bands like taking more breakdowns from death core so I think it's a, a good space to be in right now yeah exactly and uh, that's how that's what that's how we always thought about our music you know like we have these hardcore elements you know like very much influenced by Madball or Hatebreed and then we've like been huge fans of DSI and Suffocation and just like why not combine both you know and then when we book tours we always try to have a, like a hardcore band and a death metal band and then us and then uh, another deathcore band so it makes like a good good mix of uh, metal genres you know oh yeah but yeah thank you so much for coming on the podcast and um, it's been exciting I'm really excited to see you guys do your set it's been a while since we've like wanted to see the Spies Die concert. Yeah. Sick. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. All right. Cheers.